like to call it. I will uh, make a statement if that's okay. Uh, I want to be clear about one thing. Um, I, I think any allegation of voter fraud should be taken seriously and invest investigated. I believe in this case, a post-election election audit should be conducted. And I believe complaints of election fraud need to be investigated and if found, must be prosecuted under the law. The state law is clear that we do not have that authority and other entities do. And I encourage those state officials to act and do what they can to preserve election integrity. But this board must respect the authority entrusted to it and follow the law as written. We must not attempt to exercise power we simply don't have. In this case, the law is absolutely clear. We have a clear legal duty to certify the results of the election as shown by the returns that were given to us. We cannot and should not go beyond that. As John Adams once said, we are government of laws, not men. And this board needs to adhere to that principle here today. This board must do its part to uphold the rule of law and comply with our legal duty to certify this election. I will be supporting the motion. As we norm, would you like to make a statement? Yes, I do. Yeah, we could say norm. There you go. I want Michigan State colors up. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a statement that's prepared. Uh, I have a statement, it's prepared, I'm going to read it, and I have a copy for the clerk, so you don't need to try to follow me on it. The role of the Michigan Board of Canvassers dates back to the 1850s, and I take this responsibility seriously. Today I'm faced with an important decision whether or not to certify the results of the November 3rd general election. Of critical importance is the fact that only after certification by candidates who allege errors in voting pursue legal remedies, such as recounts. The law indicates we must keep meet within 20 days of the election and have 40 days to certify the vote. Any delay from any delay from this must be to await the receipt of or correction of returns or other necessary purposes. I need to review the Wayne County Board of Canvasser meeting from last Tuesday to determine the sufficiency of their certification. I determine if this is other necessary purpose. Four years ago, Democrat Party Chair Mark Brewer, representing Jill Stein. A failed presidential candidate said, quote, Stein is seeking to ensure all votes were counted and that the state's ballot tabulating machines aren't susceptible to human manipulation. The quote continues, the purposes of this manual recount are to ensure the accuracy and integrity of the election. He told the Board of State canvassers, every vote must be counted. The Michigan Republican Party chairwoman, Ron Romney Daniel, chastised the Stein campaign for pursuing the recount and called on the Hillary Clinton campaign, which had lost in Michigan to Donald Trump by around 10,000 votes, to renounce the recount effort. Michigan voters are being disenfranchised, and this recount should not happen, McDaniel said. Hillary Clinton should call off the recount. She should ask Jill Stein to abide by the results that were certified today. The Trump campaign also weighed in as Trump spokesman Jason Miller referred to the recount as nonsense, noting that the Clinton conceded to Trump and chastising reporters for chasing the shiny object. Quote, I really think it's ridiculous that so much oxygen has been given to the recount effort when there's absolutely no chance of any election results changing. This election has been decided, Miller told reporters on a call. I thank this recent history to remind the Michigan citizens and the state and local press that 220 is not the first time there have been questions about voting, voting machines, election procedures, and the process here in Michigan. What well, has become too clear to us and many of, in Michigan and across the country that Michigan has a problem conducting elections. I'm talking right into this thing. As I said, Michigan has a problem conducting elections. For that, I apologize to the citizens and to this nation and commit to working to see that the problems are addressed before the 2021 mayoral election in Detroit and the statewide 2022 elections are held. 
There is no excuse for the confusion and uncertainty that seems to follow every election in our state. It is unacceptable that so many questions have been raised about the 2020 election. The Secretary of State has been on notice of these issues and her failures to effectively address them have resulted in national embarrassment for Michigan. Just this past August, after our primary election, I was under the assumption that she was going to use her statutory supervisory control to run the November election in Detroit. This did not happen. Her inability or unwillingness to properly organize Michigan elections so that only eligible voters vote and that all votes are properly verified, and that abuse of absentee voting procedures and ballots is prevented, and that votes when being verified or counted are subject to proper scrutiny by credited poll workers is unexcusable. There needs to be a thorough and full review of Michigan's election process and procedures so that this never happens again, and we don't have a nation watching and wondering what happened in Michigan. The Secretary of State must fully cooperate with this review and must be prepared to address the serious shortcomings revealed in the November election. The people of our state deserve better. Numerous questions have been raised that may be legitimate, but the border canvassers do not have the time, the resources, or the authority potentially to get to the bottom of most of these issues. It is clear that the Secretary of State acted perhaps illegally in a way that exacerbated the situation by forcing certain local clerks to distribute ballot applications to everyone on the qualified voter file. That action was contrary to state law and resulted in some voters arriving to vote on election day only to be told, you've already voted. The unusual contract with the partisan ROC, the vote organization, may have added ineligible voters to the QVF. All questions and concerns should be addressed so that never again we have an election and with distrust and suspicion. Let's look at everything and fix our problems. In 2000, Florida was a national embarrassment when their election procedures and process were found to be inconsistent and inadequate. Officials on both sides decided never again and on a bipartisan basis got busy and fixed the problems of Florida. 20 years later, it's time for Michigan to act. Our problems are not new. Four years ago, Democrat Mark Brewer complained loudly and raised questions about voting irregularities and the fact that 50% of these very precincts could not be recounted. Just three months ago, we were shocked to learn that the problem had worsened. The number of precincts that were unable to be recounted rose to 72% for the AB count boards. Since we cannot rely upon our elected Secretary of State to provide a review of these conflicts, we must look elsewhere. That is why today I am asking the Michigan legislature to conduct an in-depth review of all election processes and procedures in Michigan. I will offer a motion to make this request uh, from the entire board of canvassers since concerns have been raised by members of all the parties. And I believe, oh, nope, not quite done. Since Republicans and Democrats have raised the issues of serious election irregularities, the legislative review should have support for the board and on both parties in the legislature. Since many reforms and recommendations may ultimately require the governor's signature, I would ask that she also lend her support in this effort. Hopefully 2022 will see elections conducted the way they were in Florida this year. While we set records for early voting and absentee ballots, everything was transparent and well-managed. The election results were known early and no dispute over the conduct of the election. It is my greatest hope that after the next election, this board will be able to certify the results in an environment where there are no unanswered questions or suspicions that our election was in any way compromised. All citizens need to be assured that Michigan is conducting clean, accurate, and professional elections. And to finalize it, uh, I do not plan on voting for certification. I believe Wayne County certification process needs to be looked at. I think there's serious problems with it. And that's the end of my statement. Thank you. Norm, and I know that you have it written uh, for our. Yeah. Yeah. The, <clears throat> I believe the purpose of this board is to assure voters that every vote is counted and that procedures are fair for everyone, all parties involved. I agree with my colleague Norm. Um, the voters in this state in uh, through a ballot uh, question changed fundamentally how we vote in this state. We now have no reason absentee voting. We have same day voter registration. We have the ability to conduct audits after the fact. 
Um, that's great. I supported all of those things, but it requires that we change our election system. We have to allow for earlier processing of absentee ballots, in my opinion. I think we need to look at how we certify and train challengers, how the parties do that, and figure out, I would hope, how we could do that on a bipartisan basis. I think we need to get rid of, uh, I think we're the only one in the nation that says you can't recount a precinct if it's unbalanced. There are many things the legislature and only the legislature can do to fix this. Um, and so I heartily support Norm's idea of a, this board, a bipartisan commission involving the legislature, the governor's office, the secretary of state, let's modernize how we do elections in this state. Let's clean it up. We're full of human errors. I don't believe there was fraud. I've seen no evidence of fraud. But there's lots of human errors given how we do things. And I think uh, that we need to seriously look at that. I think we need to seriously fix that. I was very disappointed when, uh, at that point, President-elect Trump wanted to halt the recount, the statewide recount we were engaged in four years ago, because we were almost done with it. And what it was showing was that, in fact, uh, there's some human errors, but no fraud happening. And we never got to complete that. Uh, so I'm in favor of an audit, uh, but I'm all, mostly in favor of fixing and modernizing how we conduct elections in this state. Um, I will be voting for the motion. Okay, is there any further discussion? Okay, I'm watching Norm, sorry. <laughs> is there any further uh, discussion on the motion? If there is no further discussion on the motion uh, from the board members, um, Melissa, will you please take a roll call vote? Chair Bradshaw? Yes. Vice Chair Van Langveld? Yes. Ms. Matuzak? Yes. Mr. Schinkel? Yes. Madam Chair, you have three aye votes, the one motion. abstention. The motion does move. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, second motion. I move that the Board of State Canvassers authorize the staff of the Bureau of Elections to represent the board in any recount of votes cast at the November 3rd, 2020 general election. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion on the motion? Melissa, will you please take a roll call vote? Chair Bradshaw? Yes. Vice Chair Van Langveld? Yes. Ms. Matuzak? Yes. Mr. Schinkel? Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, you have four aye votes. That motion does pass. Madam Chair, I would I would just suggest as we move forward that we complete uh, the next item on the agenda, which is the special election of the Michigan House of Representatives Fourth District, and that then we go back to public comment. Fine. Well, I'm green. Uh, I'd like to make a motion before we do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Norm, go ahead. As I mentioned in my comments, I'd like to make this motion. Madam Chair, I move the Michigan Board of Canvassers request the Michigan Legislature conduct an in-depth review of the Michigan election process and procedures to address concerns that have been raised by experts and citizens about our elections in order to assure our citizens that Michigan elections are accurate, transparent, and fully protective of all citizens' constitutional rights. Support. Discussion? Sorry, is there any, it's been moved and supported, is there any discussion on the motion? There are no discussion. Melissa, will you please take a roll call vote? Chair Bradshaw? Yes. Vice Chair Van Langveld? Yes. Ms. Matuzak? Yes. Mr. Schenkel? Yes. Madam Chair, there are four aye votes. The motion does carry. Um, I think we will move on to our next item on the agenda, uh, which is recording the results of the November 3rd, 2020 special election for the Michigan House of Representatives 4th District partial term ending 1-1-2021. Yes. Yes. So, it is. It's towards the back. <laughs> the second pink sheet. Second pink sheet. Okay. 
I can just briefly say that um, for all the reasons stated previously um, uh, regarding the process, uh, the, the vote totals uh, were such that Abraham Ayash was elected with 28,379 votes. And uh, staff does recommend that the board certify. Ready for a motion? Mm -hmm. I will make the motion. I move that the board record the results of the November 3rd, 2020 special election to the Office of State, State Representative <coughs> Fourth District was certified by the Wayne County Board of Commissioners. Father Norm. On November 17th, 2020. <laughs> it's the one that's printed in our book. <laughs> I'll uh, support the motion. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion on the motion? Here, none the list, so please take a roll call vote. Chair Bradshaw. Yes. Vice Chair Van Langveld. Yes. Ms. Matuza. Yes. Mr. Schenkel. Yes. Madam Chair, you have four I votes. The motion does move. Okay. So we, uh, I want to just check. Um, I'm sure that we still have a lot of people. Um, and going to go back to public comments from 